Hi, you caught me using my hoe. Welcome to another episode of Awesome Carbon Cycle. Today, we're gonna cover the carbon cycle. I'm Dan Rather. Please stay tuned. As you all know, in the carbon cycle, there's photosynthesis. This is when the sun gives energy to the plants. CO2 can be taken into the plants and create oxygen. This happens all the time in the carbon cycle. Thanks, Dick. Now, let me take you to another part of the carbon cycle. <laughs> At the surface of the oceans, seawater becomes cooler and more carbonic acid is formed as CO2 becomes more soluble. Dick, did you know that carbon can be released back into the atmosphere in many different ways? For example, through the respiration performed by plants and animals. This is an exothermic reaction and it involves the breaking down of glucose or other organic molecules into carbon dioxide and water. Now, on to the next part of the carbon cycle. I'm going to be talking about decaying. Hey, hey, down here. <clears throat> okay, so let's get back to the carbon cycle and the decaying then. Through the decay of animal and plant matter, fungi and bacteria break down the carbon compounds in dead animals and plants and convert the carbon to carbon dioxide if oxygen is present, or if not, nothing. Here is one of the animals that will eventually be converted. And that's a wrap. Through combustion of organic material, which oxidizes the carbon it contains, producing carbon dioxide and other things like water vapor, burning fossil fuels such as coal, petroleum products, and natural gas releases carbon that has been stored in the geosphere for millions of years. Volcanic eruptions and metamorphism releases gas gases into the atmosphere. These gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. The carbon dioxide released is roughly equal to the amount removed by silicate weathering. So the two processes, which are the chemical reverse of each other, sum to roughly zero and do not affect the level of atmospheric carbon dioxide on time scales of less than about 100,000 years. So now we're going to take a trip to the ocean. At the surface of the oceans, where the water becomes warmer, dissolved carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. That concludes our episode of the Carbon Cycle Awesomeness. Next time in Carbon Cycle Awesomeness, we will discuss how the biochemical cycle by which the carbon is exchanged between the biosphere, geosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere of the Earth. 
And in this, the cycle is usually thought of four major reservoirs of the carbon cycle, interconnected by a pathway of exchange. The annual movements of carbon, the carbon exchanges between the reservoirs, occur because of various chemical, physical, geological, and biological processes. The ocean contains the largest active pool of carbon near the surface of the Earth, but the deep ocean part of the pool does not rapidly exchange with the atmosphere. So long, folks. I'm Alan. This is Dan Rather. Yes, yes, yes. Cut McGee. And Davis Gray Davis. Thank you. And out. <laughs> Days one, get on the mic.